What's up? Welcome to the Fast Break. Andrew Beaton, Daniel Carp, Danny Nolan here to break down tonight's game against UNC. And guys, we're in an interesting position. We already previewed the game on the Fast Break last week, <laughs> but because of a certain snowstorm, here we are. And Andrew, you and I tried to drive there. It just was too much snow. <laughs> yeah, we attempted to make our way to Chapel Hill, but fortunately, before we got too far, we heard of the game getting canceled. So we made it only from Duke's East Campus to Duke's West Campus <laughs> before deciding to head home. But it was an interesting day. Duke got a lot of hate on Twitter, but it seemed like ultimately it was the responsible decision. Duke students had some fun with some Marshall Plumlee-sized snowmen <laughs> across, across campus. And we're going to get to see some great basketball tonight. And when you look at this game tonight, Dan, it's an interesting position for Duke because now instead of some nice spread out games between quality teams, they have a really tough stretch going on. They played Georgia Tech already, three out of five games there, including UNC and Syracuse, and they play Virginia Tech next Tuesday. How is Duke going to be able to handle all of these games in so little time? Well, I think so far they've done a really good job at managing their personnel and going deep into their bench. I think you saw that against Georgia Tech um, in Atlanta. The team wasn't afraid to rotate its players in and out. You never want to go into a game with the mindset that you're resting up for a game ahead but at the same time with a stretch like this you really don't have a choice I mean you're talking about they had Maryland on Saturday then they had two days to turn around before going to going to Atlanta for Georgia Tech on Tuesday Carolina Thursday night and then of course that matchup against Syracuse at Cameron less than 48 hours later mm -hmm. on Saturday it's a really grueling stretch for Duke so I think the key right now is just to stay fresh stay loose and they're doing a good job of it so far and now when you look forward, we already did a whole preview show for this game, so we've talked about all the matchups. But quickly, give me matchups that you are looking at, just one in particular for this game tonight. The one, I, the one player on North Carolina who really interests me most is Kennedy Meeks, who had a breakout performance with 23 points and 7 rebounds in North Carolina's comeback win against Florida State. And he's not just a tall big man, he's a big, big man. And that'll be interesting watching Emile Jefferson, Jabari Parker, and Marshall Plumlee trying to guard him. And he's proven the ability to step up when a guy like McAdoo didn't score against Florida State. So they have depth in that front court with Bryce Johnson. He put up a double-double against the Seminoles. So those matchups in the post, I think, are going to be fascinating. Yeah, for me, I think the matchup is definitely going to be Marcus Page against whoever happens to be playing point guard for Duke at the time. One of the interesting caveats of this is the fact that Duke right now is just going complete backcourt by committee here, and you don't know whether it's going to be Rashid Suleiman, uh, Tyler Thornton, Quinn Cook, who's going to be spending most of his time playing on Page. But Marcus Page is playing some of his best basketball of the year right now. I think just like you're seeing Jabari Parker elevating his game to another level and attacking the basket, that's exactly what Page has been able to do. And he's really elevated this North Carolina team to another level, and now they're starting to look pretty dangerous. And so now we did a preview show last week. We already made predictions for this game, but you know what? Eight days later, let's just do it again, okay? Duke, UNC, who wins the game? You know, I said Duke was going to win this game last week. I'm going to stand by that. I think the Blue Devils are going to take this one. It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough environment. There's a lot of angry people over in North Carolina that think they got cheated out of a basketball game a week ago. But that being said, I think the Blue Devils come through. It's going to be a tight one, though. I like Duke 87-80. to 80. I actually think Duke takes this with a double-digit margin, 81-67. to 67. They carry a little momentum into the home game against Syracuse. And I think in the Duke's win against Georgia Tech, you start to see some good things, some great ball movement in the backcourt, maybe signs of Quinn Cook breaking out of his funk, and that's what Duke needs, needs if they want to be playing their best basketball at the end of the year. And so now the rivalry game will finally happen. Thank you, Snow, very much for postponing it eight days. <laughs> but for Andrew Beaton and Daniel Karp, I'm Danny Nolan. We'll see you guys later.